on this episode of Bondi Vet. Chris swaps the city for the country and gets thrown in at the deep end. She's just got the, the mother of all challenges. Okay, sweetie pie. Toby has been struck down by a paralysis tick for the third time in just 12 months. I think there's only so many times a pussycat can uh, fall ill like this. This tiny bird has something stuck in its throat. But can Tim catch him before it's too late? That's him, that's him. Will a new mum follow doctor's orders or take a risk with her sick puppy? I do have to warn you though that she can get quite seriously unwell. Come on Harriet, come on. And more drama in the bush as an exotic patient puts the city boy under even more pressure. We've been through so much, don't give up now. <laughs> yes. Can we get you walking again soon. Something not a lot of people realise is that when I completed my vet training, it wasn't done in the city. It was done in rural Victoria, in cow country. Pretty much all I saw the whole time was bovine. So this week, I thought I'd go back to where it all began with a mate of mine, Andrew Perry, at his practice in Kybram. This could be interesting. This is it here. Well, they must be busy. They're doing renovations. G'day, Chris. How are you? How you doing, mate? I like the Renaults. Yeah, a lot right. of natural light at the moment. Don't change it. It's perfect. Ah, glad you like them. <laughs> yeah, come through. I'll show you around. The Kyabram Veterinary Clinic looks after Victoria's Goulburn Valley, and all the staff have been looking forward to meeting the new boy in town. I think we'll test Chris out. There'll be a few jobs he won't be so used to doing, so we'll just see how long it takes him to get used to AOA. So this is our pharmacy, Chris. Wow. Mate, this is massive. A bit bigger than you used to? Yeah, a little. Just a little, with a few other things. Like, <laughs> like these. We don't really use those too much. Are you gonna... <laughs> Back in Bondi. You're gonna need a few of them this week. Well, yeah, we'll see about that. Andrew, sorry to interrupt. We've got a difficult carving at Robin Bev's and one of you could head out as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I've, I've got a bit on, so what do you reckon? Keen to get into it? You serious? Why not? You Straight away. It? Up for a bit of a challenge? I'll have a go, yeah. Good on ya. <laughs> you alright with that? Yeah, I'll get you some gear. A few ropes for ya. Yeah. Plenty of lube will help ya. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> As they say, yeah. Alright. That's fun. it. Have fun. Fair enough. Alright, mate. Good on ya. Keep your phone on. Yep, no worries. Hey, how you going? Oh, you're new, aren't you? I am, yeah, yeah I'm Chris. All oh, right, Chris. Chris. Now, where is she? Uh, down in the yard here. Okay. How long has she been straining for, do you know? Oh, she was a bit uneasy in the middle of last night, and we, um, we brought her in about six this morning. Farmers Rob and Bev are worried because Lara is having her first calf, and she's now been in labour for several hours. Sometimes they calf by themselves, but this time we could tell that she was in trouble. Come on, up you get. So you haven't seen any feet behind there or anything? No, I just, had a, I just had a feel and there's a foot there and I think it's maybe back feet. Okay. With the breech birth, essentially, a calf is going the wrong way down a one-way street. So that means the biggest part of that calf's body, its hips, are the first thing that has to be pushed out. That makes it really tricky. I feel in here now just to get an idea about what we're dealing with here. It's back feet. It's hard enough to have your calf the first time naturally, but when the calf comes out backwards, she's just got the, the mother of all challenges. It was touch and go the second time. Um, 
at the Bondi Referral Hospital sash, a distressed Elizabeth has arrived at reception with her beloved cat, Toby. He's got tick paralysis, but um, he's just not coping. He's, um, this is the third time he's had it this year, so it's just been one thing after the other with him. Hi, I'm Hi. Lisa. Elizabeth. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Come through. Thank you. So Toby had a tick on Sunday that okay. we found. And it was a paralysis um, tick? It was, okay. yeah. So when I pulled the tick out, it left quite a crater there. Yeah. Um, and it came out quite easily, so it looked like it had done its job. He's really not wanting to use his back legs, is he? It's a little bit of movement, but not much. Hey, puppy. Oh, Toby. The tick has injected enough toxin into Toby's bloodstream to paralyse his nervous system. Oh, my little one. Where was the tick found? Right on his spine. The fact that it's come on so quickly, I think it's really important that we just err on the side of caution with him and make sure that we cover all our bases. What I think we should do is clip off all his hair. OK. I just, you know, just want him to be better and pull through. I think there's only so many times a pussycat can, uh, can fall ill like this. Poor Elizabeth is really concerned. She is so anxious about Toby having a tick. She's been down this road with tick paralysis before. She's anxious that he's going to get worse. In the first 24 to 48 hours, he can deteriorate and deteriorate fast. So it's really important that we watch him very closely. Country Victoria, Chris is struggling with Lara's breech birth. You've been very good. Unfortunately, there's no way of actually switching the calf around and make it come out the right way, so we have to deal with what we've got. And the way we do that is attach some chains around the ankles of those back legs, and then apply some gentle pressure and just hope the calf comes out. It's a really difficult thing to do. It's sort of like trying to tie a knot in a bit of spaghetti. Now I've got chains around both legs. You can feel both feet, they're both straight. We're ready to go. Okay, yeah, you give that a bit of tension there. After 30 minutes of hard work for everybody, finally the first signs of the calf. Oh well, we've got a foot there now, we can yep. see. Progress. See how it's the, the sole oh, of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's upside down. There we go. Just go. Come on, Lara. That's all right. Here we go. This is about the toughest one we've had for a long time. We've got legs out, and the hips are just starting to come through Mum's pelvis. From now on in, things are going to happen really quickly. Lara collapses, putting her life and her unborn calves in extreme danger. The size of the calf is just pressing up on her nerves around her legs and she just can't support her own weight when those pressure on those nerves is so great. We need to get this calf out. Now, if we don't do this quickly, the calf's not going to make it. Sorry girls, it's the hardest part. Come on Lara, get through this girl, you'll be right. The calf is out, but there are no signs of life. Just trying to drain the fluid out. If you want, after all that, you're going to give your mum a nice surprise, huh? He's been through a lot for you. He's still alive. He's still alive. I'm really glad I ca called you. We would have had a dead calf otherwise. Yeah. He's a big boy. Girl. It's a girl. A girl. <laughs> you're a big girl. <laughs> you surprise oh, me. Oh, you're a lucky girl, I think. Yeah. I think you're a lucky girl. Very grateful, Chris. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Any ideas on names for her? Well, what do you reckon? Well, what about Christina? Christina. Well, oh, Chris the vet. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that'd be we remember all this then. Yeah. Christina. Gonna have to break the news to mum and dad that there's a new member of the family. I'm one of three boys, but now there's a girl. Christina Brown. That would be some sort of shock. Come on, girl. You just better than I thought it's it would be. Here. Straight away, Lara walks over to Christina, starts licking her and making those little mooing sounds which just say, hey, I'm your mum. I'm here to help you. It's a really nice moment. Oh, she's a lovely little calf. Yeah, beautiful little thing. We look forward to looking after her over the coming years. It's been a good outcome. Yeah, yeah, great. Really good. Thanks so much. Oh, he's done extremely well, I'd say, yeah. A lot of city vets are small animal vets. And this is probably a, a challenge for them too. So far, so good. First task achieved. Both animals alive, seemingly happy. It's good. I think it's only going to get tougher though. Okay, sweetie pie. We'll pop a drip in you and give you some sedation. You'll feel so much better. At Sash, family cat Toby has lost the use of his back legs. It's the third time in just 12 months he's been the victim of a paralysis tick. Toby's feeling really anxious. He can't use his back legs properly. He's feeling strange and he's becoming very, very stressed. So what we need to do is give him a sedative because if he becomes too stressed, then he can deteriorate very, very quickly. Let's give you a little prick now, sweetie pie. Be a good, good boy, boy, please. Good boy. Toby now needs to be administered the tick anti serum to try and combat the toxin that's infiltrated his bloodstream. You'll feel much better with this. You will. You will. Right, baby. Toby's owner removed a tick from him a few days ago, and what we need to work out is, is he showing signs from that tick, or is there another tick hiding under his hair coat somewhere? <laughs> Any more ticks? Yeah. Oh, no, OK. All right, let's pop you down. Yes. So we found the tick crater, which is a clear indication that a paralysis tick was there. It's a big scabby hole in their skin that the tick leaves behind once it's fallen off or it's been removed. Fortunately, I haven't found any other ticks, so I think that the tick that was on him a few days ago is the culprit for his signs that he's showing now. Oh no, it's terrible. All we have to do now is watch him very, very closely, treat any signs that arise and hope that he doesn't deteriorate. It's all right, sweetie. Next morning at the Kyabram Veterinary Clinic, Hannah has arrived with a very unusual patient. Good girl, Harriet. Yeah. Three-year-old Harriet is a much-loved resident of the Kyabram Fauna Park. Dr Chris is going to see us soon, buddy. But in the last few days, the bearded dragon has developed a mysterious swelling on her leg. She's been in hibernation for five weeks and she's just recently come out and she has a lump. We're just a little concerned. You're being a good girl. We love her to death and we just want to make sure she's OK. Hey, how are you going? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm after Harriet. Is that you or is that this little one? The bearded dragon is Harriet. Okay. And I'm Hannah. So, okay, come on through. Thank you very much. Hey, little one, look at you. She's beautiful. Yeah. So what's the problem with her? She's got a lump on her leg, just on her right hind leg. Just here? Yep. Okay. And you can see, she can feel it when I touch it. So has this lump got bigger? Yeah, it was a lot more soft and mushy. Now okay. it's just hardened up. I think I'll need to take a sample from it to know for sure what it is. But okay. obviously the biggest worry with any lump is something like a, a tumour or a cancer. Cancer would be the absolute worst case scenario for Harriet. She's just too beautiful and precious to us. Hey, sweetie. It's all right, sweetie. It's very clear to me that Harriet means a lot to Hannah and to the Fauna Park. So fingers crossed that this is actually not a tumour and it's something we can actually fix. Bit of a dramatic morning. I've just had a call from one of the keepers and Cameron, our cormorant, got himself in a bit of strife. Looks like we might have to catch him, but never a dull day at the reptile park. 
the tiny bird appears to have something stuck in his throat. He's uncomfortable. And you know, we can see a big lump in his neck. The longer it stays in there, the more dangerous it is. And, and quite genuinely, he could die. Oh, there goes Cameron, straight down. Soon as they see the nets. But Tim knows catching the elusive Cameron is going to be a challenge. No sign of Cameron. Especially as he shares the pond with his lookalike brother, Craig. Where's your brother? It's time for calling in the reinforcements, and it looks like we're all going to get wet. So, Jules, he's got a silver band. All right. OK, and his brother, Craig, has got a, a, a yellow band. There's one up this end. Yeah? Yeah. Just one? Yeah, just, I've only seen the one. That's him. Ah, missed him. Oh, it's slippery, mate. Yeah. There's about this much sludge, and it stinks. Look at it bubbling. He's onto us. <laughs> You know they've gone by because there's this little mud plume where the bird's been. It's not an easy task to catch a cormorant. Yeah, there. There he goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Toby. How are you feeling today, man? How are you feeling today, little mouse? Are you a bit stronger? No. No. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yesterday, Toby arrived at Sash unable to walk after being bitten by a paralysis tick. Yeah. Today, there are still signs of the poison attacking his system. How embarrassing, Toby. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It wasn't me who did the haircut, so I can't get blamed. Toby's going to go home today. His mum is very anxious to see him. She's going to look after him at home and continue the rest of his nursing care. And it can take up to a few weeks for him to really regain his strength. So he might be wobbly in the back legs for the next couple of weeks. He's going to have to be kept indoors, really strictly watched, making sure he's eating and drinking, going to the toilet normally. I think she's going to have her hands full. Owner Elizabeth has arrived with plenty of extra hands to help Toby. Arcadia and Max are ready for the job. He likes me patting him and I hug him a lot. I'm just hoping they'll be quiet enough to give Toby the rest he, he needs. So we have to be very conscious of the fact that we've got a sick cat at home. Hi, <laughs> how are you? I've got a surprise for you in here. Look who's in here. Hey, Tobes. Darling. Oh, Tobes, look at you. <laughs> oh, look at you. Much relieved. I came in quite concerned, but I'm very relieved that we can bring Toby home. What do you guys think of the haircut? Sort of good. Sort of Sort of good? Sort of. Good? Sort of. Goodbye. Thanks again. See you later, my Thank pleasure. You. Take care. Thank Bye, you. Toby. I want to get a sample from that lump. Yeah. So I'm going to have to stick a needle in there. It's just important to know what's sitting inside that lump. In Kyabram, Harriet the Bearded Dragon is about to undergo a biopsy to determine whether a lump on her leg is cancerous. The two most likely causes of this are either a tumour. Yep. If that's the case, we're probably going to get tissue, so pink stuff, maybe in a bit of blood. OK, all right. If it is an abscess, we should probably get something that looks a bit like cheese. It's all right, sweetie. It's an anxious wait for the three-year-old's keeper, Hannah. It's not really conclusive. The fluid that's come out is fairly clear. Yep. What I might do is actually just put that under the microscope and just see what sort of cells are sitting in there. It is scary to know that she may have a cancer or tumour. If anything bad happened to her like that type of news, it would be terrible. All right, there's a lot of one type of cell here. There's a whole lot of pus cells in there. So what we have is an abscess. That makes me feel a bit better than it being a cancer. Yeah. Thank you. What's happened here is we've had an initial infection which has caused a sudden massive pus to form there. Okay. What happens with reptiles is that they can't break that pus down themselves. They're left with a lump 
Okay. And it becomes firmer, and harder, and it just stays there. The problem with this abscess is that essentially it's a ball of bacteria. If we don't do anything about it, it can very easily spread around the rest of the body and from there it could kill her. So she's going to need to stay with us and we're going to need to actually put her under anaesthetic. Okay. And actually cut that lump out. Do you hear that, Harriet? <laughs> the one thing that we just need to be mindful of is that reptile anaesthetics are tricky. Yep. They're hard. They don't generally breed that well for themselves or under anaesthetic. Oh, okay. So it becomes quite a big procedure to get her under anaesthetic and, and keep her there. Yep. All right. Need to say goodbye. See you, sweetie. Even though Harriet's small and we're dealing with something like an abscess, there's still a lot that can go wrong. She's really red. She seems really agitated and itchy. Ten-week-old Nala is being admitted to SASH. So she's been, like, biting her paws and stuff. The golden retriever puppy has suddenly developed a swollen face. It's now so bad that she can barely see. Oh, it's very sad. Oh. You can't help her. You don't know what she's trying to tell you. Yeah. Olivia and Yuki have only had their baby for two weeks. You do get scared, but just want to make sure that's nothing serious. Sweetheart. Oh, come through. Hi, sweetie. So when did you first notice that? Just when we got home around. Half an hour ago. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And, what, and what did you notice that? She was just really red around her eyes and, like, her mouth yeah. there. Yep. And she's, yeah. she keeps scratching and she keeps biting her feet. Has she been in the backyard today? Yeah. When? She's been on the grass. And on the grass? Yeah. My goodness, you look ridiculous. <laughs> so she's all swollen around the eyes, can barely open the eyes and the lips. So she's got little hives under her ears. So what she may have done is she's either come into contact with something like uh, grass or, or some sort of plant that's caused an allergic reaction, or she may have had her insect bite on her nose and has just caused her to become itchy and swollen all over. I know. This is a pretty awful feeling. I know from people who have allergic reactions, you feel itchy, you feel scratchy in your throat. When your eyes swell up, you, you can barely see and she just wants to rip her skin off. So she's feeling absolutely awful. There he goes. Oh. Okay, well, let's hope that that's Craig. And let's keep trying to get Cameron in here. At the Australian Reptile Park, Trevor and Tim are no closer to catching Cameron the cormorant. That's him, that's him. The little bird has swallowed something that has caused a dangerous swelling in his throat. There's a lump that wasn't there a, a day ago. So it's a real worry because anything stuck in the throat, let's say we feed him, that food might get stuck as well and, and simply could choke. After 30 minutes, the fast-moving camera is still giving Tim the runaround. There's one. Look, right there, you cheeky little fella. They dive underwater and hide. It's not an easy task to catch a cormorant. OK, he's up under the bridge. OK, he's back in the water. They're very quick swimmers, and that makes it really difficult. He's on to us. <laughs> I see him, I see him. He's still in there, mate. Would you jump over the other side? That's him. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Ah. Finally, Tim manages to capture the elusive cormorant. Ah, straight away I can yep. feel it. Look at that. Geez, that must be hurting him. Yeah. Look at it. There it is. Yep. Okay, let's get him up. As much as we pick up every speck of rubbish that's around the place, there's stuff that might filter through with the water that's been dropped, and it could be anything from, you know, a chip packet to a dummy. Cameron is now heading to the medical room. The object needs to be removed okay. urgently. Just um, put him right down in the bottom so he doesn't fall. There you go, mate. Right up, let's get him straight up the top. You guys right to grab that stuff? Yeah. Whatever it is in there could be penetrating through his tissue and that in itself could cause infection. And yeah, it's, it's not a good result if we don't get it out. Oh, you guys stink. <laughs> 
Yes. Oh no, you feel very uncomfortable and itchy. So itchy. Back at Sash, little Nala is suffering a severe allergic reaction. So we're going to give her an injection of an antihistamine. So that will take away some of the itching and help with the allergic reaction that she's having. So do you want to just get, hold on to her and it's a tiny little needle. Good girl. OK, it's done. Oh, worried. A bit teary. With the injection over, Lisa is about to recommend something that Olivia doesn't want to hear. I think it's a really good idea that you leave her in hospital so that if there's any problems with her breathing, that we can treat her straight away. Sure. Oh, I don't want to leave her, yeah. Probably take her home and see how she goes, yeah. Because Nala's a baby and it's all come on so quickly, we need to monitor her in hospital overnight. But I suggested this to Olivia and I saw her face just drop. I don't think that she's coping so well with this. I, I do have to warn you though that she can get quite seriously unwell. Um, even though she seems bright and happy now, um, she could go downhill quite quickly. She could develop breathing problems and um, she could also develop vomiting and diarrhea and, and you know, an anaphylactic type reaction, which I've seen. But the besotted Olivia still isn't convinced. To be, I don't know, I'd probably leave her here just for one night. No. <laughs> I miss her. You can understand people are so attached to their pets, they're leaving them in a place that they've never been to before with people that they don't know. But sometimes you have to take the emotion out and just look at the situation and say, this is what's best for my dog and I have to just be tough. Go on, Harriet, it's time. You ready, mate? To your right. In Kyabram, Chris and Dr Andrew Perry are about to start surgery to remove an abscess from Harriet's leg. Let's get that beautiful beard of yours in here. Come on, it's OK. But putting the three-year-old under anaesthetic is extremely dangerous. The underlying problem with any reptile is their whole metabolism works incredibly slowly. So they can be holding their breath and be fine, or they can not be breathing and be far from fine. And they both look the same. Tails has dropped there. Now we're pretty close there. If you'll let you go. Yeah, all ready to go. Andrew is assisting Chris by keeping a constant watch on Harriet's vital signs. They are darn difficult things to monitor the anaesthetic <laughs> of. With two hands on deck, hopefully uh, we can avoid any problems. I'm pretty happy how deep she is. We'll just get her back on two. Harriet, being a reptile, is living up to the hype. She's breathing incredibly shallow, but her heart rate at the moment is pretty stable, so it's time for the operation, and we've got to make this quick. Just cut over the abscess there, and now we just need to get in and around it and essentially shell it out. So the trick now is going to be getting right around what it, is going to be a pretty decent sized mass. Beautiful. Beautiful job. So I'm just going to flush this hole here and just to remove any bacteria that might still be sitting inside there. It's time to sew it back up. Two stitches to go. It's all good. I'm not yeah. getting a reading on her heart right. Suddenly, Andrew notices a change in Harriet. It's just not breathing well. She's just breath holding and yep. Any more reflexes? Not really. I just can't get any breaths into her. Come on, Harriet. Come on. We've been through so much. Don't give up now. Come on, Cameron. Hopefully we can get this out real easy, mate. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is hoping he can remove the object that has caused a dangerous swelling in Cameron's throat. No more biting, so 
one if you want to hold him that way for me, please. I can feel it's actually got bends in it. Best case scenario, this just comes straight out and it's easy. Otherwise, we've got to take him down to the vet, knock him out, which has its own risks, and it's quite an elaborate procedure. I can't see what it is. The view down that throat is not that nice, but um, to prevent them from swallowing water and everything else, the throat actually closes. So, you know, we're talking a fair distance there now. Sorry, mate, that can't be nice. The worst case scenario is that uh, it's ruptured something inside. Now, if that happens, he's not going to eat, he's not going to feel good, there's going to be big problems. A little bit more, just hold your tweezers there. I'm going to try and slip it over the end. Oh, yeah, I can feel it. Yep, yeah, up you come. Keep coming, keep sure. coming. Nope, nope, that's it. Lost Down again. It, lost it. It's a delicate procedure, and after 10 minutes, Tim is no closer to extracting the mystery object. That's it. Down, down, wait, a bit slower. Oh. Yep, keep them open. Lost it. Hang in there, mate. Just want to feel again. Sorry, little buddy. There it yeah. is. There it is. Oh. Grab it. There you go. My oh, God, oh. look at the that. Oh. There you go, mate. Oh. There you go. Wow. Well, it must feel good to get it out. Uh, hiya, mate. Sorry about that, Cameron. That must feel good, buddy. As that straw was coming up his neck, I could feel it running by my fingers, and it come out. Yeah, big sigh of relief. Look at that. That's nuts. How did you get that down? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, good on you, mate. That's what you should do next time you come yeah. across a straw. Don't throw your straws in the water. Wow, oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> hey, well, that's good, mate. That's good result, hey? Yeah. Come on. We've been through so much. Don't give up now. Harriet the bearded dragon has stopped breathing during an operation to remove an abscess from her leg. Come on, Harriet. We want to see her breath. We want to see any sign of her waking up and we'll be feeling a lot better then. Her tongue just looked just a little bit. That's what I like to see. At last, the three-year-old gives Chris and Andrew the sign they've been waiting for. It's hard to believe that something as minor as a tongue flick can mean so much, but with Harriet, it means she's coming back. Right on, Chris. I've got to say, it's good to see you. You went quiet on us. I feel so much better now knowing she's OK. I don't like to say it in front of Chris, but I admire the fact that he's quite willing to get out of his comfort zone and give anything a go. An antibiotic injection completes Harriet's treatment. Hey, settle down. Hey. Wait, see all these signs of life now? Would have been quite handy when you're actually under anaesthetic, yeah? Should we put you away in the cage? Then you're going to rest. Another one. It's pretty amazing to think that this clinic sees all the big stuff, but it's been a tiny little bit of dragon today that's caused us to have a wild ride. But she's pulled through. You rest up, okay? Now we'll be a talk. You hear me okay? Okay, mate, let's get you back, hey? At the Australian Reptile Park, Cameron the Cormorant has been given the all clear after having a straw removed from his throat. Hey, look at him waiting. <laughs> Wonder if he knows that he's coming back. Here or... he is. The tiny bird is now heading back to his pond, which he shares with his sibling, Craig. OK, mate, you ready? Off you go, back to your brother. There you go. There you go, buddy. Off you go. You got some fish there, Trev? Yeah, good. I'm going to try and feed him. It's a good indication of how he feels. He's been through a lot and I wouldn't really expect him to feed, but I'm going to try. There he is. There you go, mate. Oh, look at that. That's great. I can't believe he just ate. That's totally unexpected. It's a really good sign because he feels good and the food, it's obviously not stuck in his throat, so it's going where it's meant to go. That's a good thing. See you, boys. Thank you. See you later. Look at 
look at your big swollen face. Hey? At Sash, Lisa's trying to get permission to keep Nala in for overnight observation. Oh, darling, I know. Terrible. The 10-week-old puppy is suffering a severe allergic reaction. But despite the warnings, devoted owner Olivia can't cope with being parted from her baby. Oh, I don't really want to leave her, yeah. She's like my little daughter. <laughs> I, I do have to warn you, though, that she could go downhill quite quickly. She probably stay for the night just to be safe. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good idea. Finally, Olivia's partner, Yuki, breaks the deadlock. I don't really want to leave her, but then if you don't leave her and then something happens to her, then you feel really bad. Yeah. OK. Nala's only showing the initial signs of an allergy, so as the night progresses, she could definitely swell up in her throat, she could affect her breathing, she could go into anaphylactic shock in the worst-case situation. So we really need to keep a close eye on her. get you out of here to your discharge instructions. Next morning at SASH, little Nala is showing no signs of the serious allergic reaction she was suffering yesterday. So I've come in today and seen Nala and she's looking fantastic. The swelling's gone, her eyes are open, she's not itching anymore. That's a girl. For besotted owner Olivia, it was a very long night away from her baby. I think I love her more than him. <laughs> Uh, comment? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> but she is adorable, so I understand. There she is. Hi. No. Come on. Come on. The look on Olivia's face when she saw Nala, she just melted. Oh, you look, look better now. She's pretty lucky that she responded so well to the antihistamine. Yeah. Hey. Okay. I just hope that you don't get another <laughs> reaction because we don't know what happened. Do we, Nala? What was it? The problem is we often don't know what they're allergic to, so it's just going to be a matter of keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that Nala doesn't react to anything again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, no worries. That's no problem. Yeah. You made the right decision leaving her here, so um, she's all better now and you can get to enjoy her at home. In Kyabram, Christina, the little calf Chris delivered, has recovered from her difficult start to life and is now a picture of health over at Bev and Rob's farm. What do you reckon, Bev? As good as we've got? Yeah, Christina. Yeah. Good little calf. Mm. Really good. We're very grateful to Chris for, you know, bringing Christina into the world and, and she's such a lovely little thing. Should know better than to keep a lady waiting, shouldn't I? Back at the clinic, Harriet the Bearded Dragon has recovered from the surgery to remove an abscess from her leg and is now ready to return to the Kyabram Fauna Park. Anna's going to be happy to see you. You go home. Now, mate, me and the bearded lady are heading out, and then I'm going to head home. Righty, Ava, it's been darn good to have you. You've done a really good job. Absolute pleasure. I'll tell you what, if uh, things don't go so well up at Bondi for him, I reckon we uh, could fit him into the practice down here all right. He seems to do a pretty good job. Okay, hungry? You hungry? Waiting for Harriet is her keeper, Hannah. You hungry? She hasn't seen the bearded dragon since her operation. Really looking forward to Harriet coming back. It'd be so exciting to see her just back in her enclosure, see how she's been and have a good look at what's happened. Yeah, Hannah. Chris. Someone's been missing you. Harriet. A little girl in here. Yeah? Oh. We're happy to have you back, Harriet. Chris has done a great job. She looks really good and healthy, so everything looks like it's worked out well, and so we're very happy with that. Is this a good spot here? She yeah, she'll it. be fine there. She'll like that. Good girl. She's pose first. <laughs> there you go. 
You're home. Neither Hannah nor Harriet will probably ever truly understand just how tense that surgery really was, but I do. That's why I'm very happy to see her home. She's settled back in well. Mm. All right, well, I'm done. Just before you go, Chris, mm -hmm. there is another job for you. We have a baby koala and he needs to check up. OK. I can delay my trip just a little bit for Thank a baby koala, surely. Thanks, that'd be great. <laughs> all right. After all the action, the excitement and sometimes the stress of this week, finishing with a cute and cuddly koala probably isn't a bad thing. It's just up here. She'll be up here with Mum. Yep, so little buddy's <laughs> just up there with Mum. Hi, little buddy. Okay. Little Kay is just eight months old and needs to be weighed to make sure he's growing normally. Just looking for a temporary loan. It's OK, little man. OK. Here we go. Hey, no, you're right. It's OK. Come with me. I'm going to give you a perch here. There we go. There we go. Oh. There we go. Are you uh, happy? <laughs> That's cheating. He's weighing. You're trying to take some weight off there. <laughs> well, it's worked. Cool. All right, one and a half kilos. Thank you very much for that. You're okay. a faster little boy. You're going to go back to Mum, do you? Oh, you really are tucking a tantrum, aren't you? You're going to go back to Mum? When you look at how feisty and full of energy Kay is, and you add that to a healthy weight, you know he's doing well. One and a half kilos, if you were wondering. It's really good to have Chris come in and help us. I reckon he's done a pretty good job for a city boy. Looks like he's happy to be back with Mum. Yeah, he sure is. Well, I'm done. I'm back to Bondi. Thank you very much for no, that. Thank it was you. nice to meet you. It was a nice way nice. to finish up. Thank yeah, you. No worries. I always knew just how hard the guys out here work, and this has only reinforced it. But now, I'm heading back to Bondi. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.